at around 1.45 p.m. I had a piece of chicken. I believe that piece is called a breast piece of chicken along with some sunny side up eggs and a glass of whole milk like I'm having right now. And mom started uh, cooking the chicken at noon from what I recall and it took her until roughly 1 40 45 p.m. in order to get everything ready uh, then around 5 30 p.m. Uh, we went to a bar and grill called Gallows. G-A-L-L-O apostrophe S. Uh, since tonight they were doing a karaoke night. Although, uh, this was their first night. Their first karaoke night. Uh, with someone uh, new. Uh, so they ended up being pretty packed as such. And it was a pretty big restaurant. Uh, so, Mom and I only ended up singing two songs. I first sang That's Amore by Dean Martin. Uh, since I recently found the full song, since it was in... Several days ago, it was in the recommended sidebar of another YouTube video where I was also listening to a song. Oh, that's Amore. I first heard it a year or two ago, but it's only recently that I found a full version of the actual song, along with a remix of it that's pretty cool. For the second song, I sang yeah, my staple, Suddenly Seymour, by Ashman Howard, where I sing both parts of the duet, male and female. Uh, earlier on, I think a uh, while into the point in which I sang the first song, and while waiting for my chance to sing the second one, I sang. I got, for a starter, something relatively unique. Something on the menu that says... They're called Funnel Dogs. Two skinless hot dogs wrapped in the kind of dough 
that they use for funnel cakes and with Mike's Hot Honey essentially a brand of spicy honey it was enjoyable Though right before I had the order of funnel dogs, I got this sort of spicy chicken soup because it was the soup of the day. It could be described as a sort of bisque, but it didn't have, didn't really have any chunks of chicken. It did seem to have some veggies, so to speak. Yeah, Mom and I both got it. The soup came with a $20 steak dinner that I got. with mashed potatoes with gravy and corn as my sides. Every part of that steak dinner was pretty enjoyable. Even though by the point of the steak dinner, I felt pretty full. Because of the soup and Funnel dogs earlier. So I ate the steak dinner pretty slowly. I found the steak to be disappointingly small compared to the ones you can get at Wegmans for. Uh, less money, but if you try to also get mashed potatoes and corn, it probably balances out in terms of cost, especially if you then also get gravy. For the mashed potatoes. I figured I would take a little break from the keto diet since this was a new place for me. I opted for the steak to be cooked medium. And it was a good steak. Had some good tenderness to it. Wasn't too hard to cut. The mashed potatoes and gravy were enjoyable. And the corn was good too, if a bit uh, different from the kind of corn I'm used to. Yeah, we stayed until about Eleven or so. I ended up nodding off in the hour prior. Or to the end of that karaoke night. 
and I nodded off on the car ride back home because by 10 p.m. I was exhausted. And felt exhausted even while standing up. Maybe it had something to do with the big meal I had. Yeah, I think I may have gotten up in the middle of the night and then didn't go back to bed. From what I can recall, although I'm not entirely sure on that. And the hours between me waking up and uh, when we went to that first karaoke night at Gallows it was about a a 30 or so minute drive to get there from where we were and while there yeah, I barely worked on uh, the B Mutual Libre wrestler Since as soon as my soup came, I then waited for the rest of the food I ordered to ensure I wouldn't get the drawing dirty. And then after eating, eating, I felt tired. Throughout the night, I had roughly two fuzzy navels kind of cocktail that I think has an orange juice base our server accidentally cleared one when there was just a splash of liquid left but it's okay and I had uh, two glasses of water, all the drinks with ice throughout the night, which lasted several hours. Our time at Gallows. Prior to those hours, I primarily worked on the 99th Dan Hamming episode. By attempting to make further edits to the audio of me singing the chorus to Daisy Bell three times using the Android Voice Changer app through the BlueStacks 5 emulator. I tried applying another effect to it to try and make the audio sound like somebody else rather than me. At times I still felt that it sounded like me after applying the man audio effect to it. I 
but I made sure not to apply it too much so it didn't sound like artificial, an artificial voice. I couldn't keep the nervous effect. Uh, for one thing, and my aim wasn't to make the person sound nervous while singing. I just wanted them um, to sound like somebody else because they are somebody else in the context of the episode. But that nervous effect uh, sped up the tempo of the audio. without me really noticing, but it was noticeable, plain to see when I put it in Beyond Studio, so I had to just stick with what I had, which was essentially audio of me singing pitched down, in effect, and to get it to sync up with the instrumentals of Daisy Bow. It took at least six attempts. Each time. Making minor adjustments. To each instance of me singing the chorus. On the timeline. Yeah, mostly a fraction of a second forward. And then after that, I listen to music made by the Go Animator. Smirks. I know him for both. Here's great go animate videos that he's made in the past and for how the music he makes now on you on post on SoundCloud, but also some on YouTube. He uses FL Studio to do it. And I uh, just like what he produces using FL Studio. He hasn't posted a new YouTube video in about two months, though. I did recall he made a new GoAnimate video five months ago on one of his three channels. Which I don't follow that extensively because considerable amounts of time can go between posts. It took some listening over and some thinking, but I eventually decided to use a music track he made called Sippin'. Yeah, prior to this, I considered jamming, fine, both versions of it, yeah, but fine ended up having rain audio in it, yeah, which I didn't want because it was raining, it wasn't raining in the 
99th Dan Hamming episode at that point. Yeah, I don't uh, make any money from the Dan Hamming episodes. It's just uh, something I like to do. Although maybe not as much as drawing on polystrain. Which is something I have made money on. Uh, through commissions. And I needed to... Uh, use... Music from Smirk slash not Smirk slash Purple Falp. Smirks. And I'd just like you to know, if you hear music in a 99 Dan Hamming episode, it is almost guaranteed that I didn't make it. Yeah, I used it, uh, though at times in order to set a certain mood. Uh, to an extent, uh, there is a freedom in the United States to use uh, copyrighted materials uh, for projects like I make. It's just that important it's important to ensure that uh, you're not causing any harm uh, to the owners of uh, those copyrighted materials. Uh, these days I'm more likely to uh, from here on out use something from the YouTube audio library. Yeah, for music. Dan Hammond episodes. Oh, though I've really got to do some listening to figure find out what's out there. And this new scene I'm working on is the point in which Dan Hamming uh, tells Kyle the Uber driver to stop <clears throat> in order to kind of branch out to the point where he ends up uh, picking up a bowl of mustard. You know, all that seems to be required is that a canal is connected to a canal that's connected to the portal of the elements. Now, that seems to be the only requirement for these buildings. <laughs> 